Hey there do-it-yourself technicians. Today I'm going to look at some of the PDAs and smartphones that I've used and loved in the past. A PDA, or Personal Digital Assistant, is exactly that. It's something you have yourself that's digital that assists you with life. Basically a lot of the things that we do on a smartphone now, but they weren't phones. Even though they started around the same time, they didn't integrate the technologies until much later. I was first introduced to the concept of a PDA by my boss who was the Dean of Art Design and Communication in about 1996-97. He had what I believe was the original Palm Pilot and it was used to sync up his calendar with his secretary and one of the great features of it was that it would beep five minutes before his next appointment. Which means if you were in a meeting with him and it beeped, you knew you had about five minutes left to finish up before he kicked you out to start the next meeting because obviously he ran a pretty tight ship. I really only touched it a few times, helping with issues syncing between it, his Mac, and his secretary's Mac. But I know, he took it everywhere he went, and used it and relied on it heavily. In late 2000, as part of my job reviewing products for PC Magazine Australia, I did a shootout between 13 different PDAs on the market at the time. And they ranged in price from $250 up to $1,400. Yes, some of these devices were that expensive even then and didn't include a phone. During the course of that review, I fell in love with and gave the editor's choice to the Palm M100. This tiny little black and white screened, two megabyte storage device that was one of the successors to that original Palm Pilot. At this point, I got quite familiar with Palm's graffiti, which was the language that you had to use of all of the abbreviated characters that you scratched in on the bottom section of the screen in order to input into the device. It was completely touch screen, well, touch with the stylus. Screens that you could touch with your fingers came much, much later. I actually bought the test unit off the supplier and took it traveling with me throughout Tassie in early 2001, at around the same time the actual article came out in the magazine. My wife and I got quite good at scrolling on it and were able to keep notes of all of the different places we went and also a tally of some of the expenses we incurred. It was really handy for that sort of stuff. Kind of like a journal might have been, but digital. Which seems really obvious now, but in those days it was pretty much unheard of. By comparison, it was so far ahead of the phones of the day. At the time, I had this device, a Nokia 2110. And some of the giant features of that were two lines of display on the screen and the ability to remember the last 10 numbers dialed it also sent text messages. One of the early phones to do that too. A few years later, I upgraded from the M100 to a Handspring Visor, which was made by a new company, Handspring, that was created by the people who had started Palm but didn't like the way that its new owners, 3Com, had taken it. So they created a new hardware platform that ran the Palm OS, and it was a really nice device. This one had 8 meg of RAM, though still the same black and white screen, although slightly larger now. Unfortunately, that device fell foul of being stepped on in the dark one night. Then, sometime in 2004, I found what I always wanted. Well, at least at that time. A Palm OS device that was a phone as well. The Trio 180G was a graffiti-based Palm OS flip phone and it was my pride and joy for several years. I really loved that thing. I could scratch out notes on it. I could scratch out text messages. It was all sorts of amazing in its day. My next device was the Trio 650. By this time, Palm had bought Handspring back again, just to sort of complete the circle. But they made various devices, some of which were powered by Windows Mobile and some powered by the Palm OS. Sadly, the 650, they didn't include the graffiti, and in fact, it had a full QWERTY keyboard on it, as well as a D-pad for navigation. I got used to this fairly quickly, but in general, the machine was a huge upgrade. It now had a color screen and a 0.3 megapixel camera in a phone. Oh, it could also send and receive MMS messages, sending pictures by text, brand new at the time. One thing I will say for that camera, it may have been terrible by today's standard, but it took some of the best low-light photographs of its day, hands down. It also had this cute little mirror in the back beside the lens so you could actually see where you were to take a selfie because front-facing cameras still hadn't come out at that stage. 
Again, I really loved this phone and used it every day up until I bought my first iPhone in 2008. If you haven't already, you can see a video I made about the iPhone and why I chose it up here. Question of the day. What are some of the old phones that you've used and loved or hated? Let me know in the comments down below. And while you're there, hit the like button if you got something useful out of this episode. The Tech Doctor exists to help you become your own technician. Learn about the technology, protect yourself from the bad guys and repair it when it breaks. There's some older videos you may not have seen before here and here. And if you click on the Tech Doctor logo down here, you can subscribe to this channel and press the notification bell to be notified of any of the new episodes as they come out. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.